This is my favorite case today. It's our largest project. We think in the next five years, probably four to five billion dollars will go into this. The money is waiting and ready to go. Science Magazine published this incredible in 2012 about seaweeds. South Africans, you are one of the richest seaweed countries in the world. How many people you have employed in seaweeds? Yeah, you got some poor people picking up seaweeds in Saldana Bay and dry them on the ground and try to sell it to the Koreans at uh, 61 cents per kilogram. I mean, I thought slavery was over, but it's apparently not yet. Koreans are the biggest buyer of this here in South Africa. This is uh, our project in Pater Noster, the Western Cape. We're doing 3D seaweed farming. I mean, originally we called it uh, multi-trophic farming. But, you know, no one really got what it was. And since everyone is so fascinated with 3D printers, we said, well, we'll do 3D farming. Everyone got interested in 3D farming. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, we've never had so much interest in 3D farming since we talked about this. Now, what are we doing? Well, we're creating those platforms which are floating. This is HDPE, food grade quality, the same that's used by Tetra Pak. Fish can eat it, you can eat it, no problem. Okay, this is the best polymers that you can get, and we can make it out of the fistula as well. This is 3D farming, and what is happening is that we're generating seaweeds fast because we have eliminated so much from the bottom of the ocean because we've been doing this fishing technique with these nets that just scrape around everywhere. And so we've been scraping the bottom of the ocean all the time. We have destroyed the ecosystems in the bottom of the ocean, and therefore we don't have the regeneration anymore. The fishes have nowhere to hide anymore. South Africa is not the only country that's been destroying the kelp forests. Kelp forests are as important as the Amazon forests. So we regenerate the kelp forests. And the kelp we can harvest, but we have these floating things that are not anchored. And we passed the test of the 27 meters of waves. We can take that. Why? Because our platforms are 10 square kilometers. Ah, if you have one kilometer or one hectare, the sea will play with it. We have agreements to create 100 square kilometers of platforms in Indonesia, and we're going to do the same as a pilot now of 100 square kilometers in Argentina. The tests were done here. What do we do with the seaweed? Well, the seaweed, we don't let it grow to a very big one. We create multiple levels of seaweed. We suck off the young seaweeds. We put it into a digester. The digester has 12 chambers with 12 different types of microorganisms. And we're producing, ladies and gentlemen, 1,000 tons per hectare per year of algae, which will give us 4,200 cubic meters per hour per hectare of gas. Are you really want to do shale gas in South Africa? You really want to destroy your land forever? Or would you like to consider a business model that gives you triple the return? Because the concentration of the, the biogas we can generate, proven in Pater Noster, without any South African interest to the date, is we have a concentration of methane of 75% and we have no H2S. We've eliminated the need for filtration. That means the gas coming out of the digester is straight to go to generate energy. The emissions of CO2 is 11 grams per kilowatt hour. By the way, the 400 is not ESCOM's norm. It's a bit higher. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what the best of it all? The best of it all is that we're regenerating shellfish and aquatic plants. We're regenerating biodiversity. And guess what? The waste from a biodigester is fertilizer. Until 1975, the largest supplier of fertilizers in the world were seaweeds. And then we changed it for petroleum-based fertilizers that release nitric oxides in the air, which is 221 times worse than CO2. And that's the standard in the market. We can do it with the waste of seaweeds. And we're doing it. Indonesia has signed up for 100 square kilometers. The first 33 square kilometers are done in Sulawesi. 
Financing is about $2.5 million per square kilometer. And we're creating tradable new markets for these units. Why do we do it? Because we can supply gas at half the price of solar. I'm not against solar. I'm in favor of the best. And why can we be so cheap? Because we make money and on the biogas and on the fertilizer. And by the way, it's a zero emissions.